Cochabonvae. It's a, a Welsh named fly, obviously, and this is it. Um, it can be fished wet or dry. I'm going to tie a dry version today. It's a representation of a beetle, and um, it's it's from. It, it hatches in the summer, in the summertime, especially July. And it's it's a terrestrial fly, a fly from the hills, and um, the fly has the same name as the natural fly, and also um, the same name as the hackle. If you ask for a cochabondi hackle, you you know a cape like this, you'll get the uh, the dealer will know what you're talking about. So there's three names. The Cochabondi is the artificial. The Cochabondi is the um, natural fly of the hills, of the gorse, and also of the hackle. <coughs> now, as I say, representation of a beetle. And uh, when I used to go bass fishing up the west coast of, of Wales, um, one day I was digging bait at uh, the mouth of the Mouthach estuary and um, the, these little beetles, the natural beetles, were being blown down from the hills above and they were all over the, um, the bank of the river there. Um, it's a very good fly for hill, hill locks or hleans as we say in Wales, Hlinpada um, and some of these uh, mountain lakes. It's used as a bob fly mainly, if boat fishing, it would be the top one of the three. But it, it is a good fly. Not many people realise it's also a good fly for sea trout, as well as trout. Uh, the word cochabondi, I'm not a Welsh speaker, so bear with me a little bit, but I think it means red with a black belly, or with a black trunk. Uh, and when we say red, we don't mean this type of red. I don't mean red like this that we use in sewing flies or this type of red, these hackles. We mean a sort of fox red like this or um, like this or like this. Now the true cockabondi hackle is has got a black centre and um, I'll, I'll show you, give you one to illustrate it. Can you see each feather has a black centre down it? But it should also have black tips. Um, now it's very difficult to get that these days. So uh, I've got to do the nearest I can to, to that. Um, right, um, I'm going to use it from a neck cape, not from a saddle cape. Take the, this hackle from a neck cape. Right, now I want to take you through the dressing of this cochabondi, or I should say, take you through the tie of the cochabondi. I have already waxed the silk. A very small point here. Someone said to me once, why bother to wax the silk? Some silks are pre-waxed. Well, I say, why not? Because it grips better. It adds a bit of um, durability to the wax. Um, so it doesn't rot over the years. And the action of pulling your, your silk fast through a block of wax melts the wax into the silk a bit like the old uh, cobblers used to do years ago. Right, I'm, I'm using a black silk and I'm using a size 12 hook. And on this hook, or any hook really, if you want to um, tie without the barb, you can buy barbless hooks. All you can do as I do, I simply squeeze the barb down with a, a, a mini pliers like this. Uh, you can do that, what, what, whatever you wish, if you want to go barbless. I do sometimes, I don't other times. But our club encourages barbless hooks. Right, now then, um, there's a tag right at the end. And the tag is gold. So I'm going to use for this tag... The flat go the flat uni miler. I'm just cutting a bit off. Excuse me, being out of camera. Cut a bit off like this. Gold one side, silver the other. So with all flat miler, as you've heard me say before, you tie it on with the wrong side towards you. 
because it turns over. Like that, draw it through a little bit. And I put this down secure. This, this uh, tag is supposed to represent an air sac. Now, if you've ever seen a beetle, a lot of water beetles dive up and down. Although this is a terrestrial fly, uh, it could imitate any beetle, really. A water beetle or um, a, a, a terrestrial, a land-bred beetle. Uh, so this tag probably, you see me put a touch of varnish to help it stick, probably is to imitate a water beetle. But it does no harm there, It whether you're imitating a water beetle or a, a terrestrial beetle, the tag is recommended. Not a difficult fly to tie. Now I'm going to give this a good wind, a couple of winds. I'm going to go back over because this tag should be sort of prominent. Okay, now I'll take my silk back down, ready to tie it off. Like that. So that's the tag on. I've got enough here for a few more tags which I will keep. Right, the um, the next item is the body and the body is Peacock Hurl. Hurl from the peacock, strands of peacock like this. So I'm just going to get ready. It's a fattish body so I'm going to tie several strands. I've probably got six or seven here so I'm going to tie them in and I start here like this. I'm going to draw it back a little bit because I want to keep the eye clear. But this bulk helps me with the fat body. I tie it down like this. Now you can rib this fly if you want to. Um, I don't bother to rib it, but I'm tying this down firm because I'm going to put a bit of varnish on here in a moment. Peacock curl is very attractive to fish, but it's not the strongest material so the varnish I'm going to put on now helps it all it sticks and gets into it and it holds it down and it doesn't show but it it, it is um, good makes the fly more durable so that's the varnish on and I simply wind the peacock curl See the type of thing? And I get up to there. Beetles have a fattish body and beetles, I tell you, the trout love them. The trout love beetles. I'll just remove this. My camera is giving a bit of shade. So that's the hackle, uh, that's the body on. Uh, it can be fished wet or dry. If it was a wet fly, I would probably rib it with wire. but And I'd probably use a hen hackle. But this is uh, going to be a dry fly. I've had, more, I've had a lot of success with the dry fly. And I'm going to take a hackle from this hen, uh, from this cock neck cape, not, not a saddle. I've selected a hackle. So I'm just going to prepare it by taking off making the bottom like that so I've got a little stalk to tie it in I tie it in like this with a sort of figure of eight one that way one that way another one that way another one this way and I tie down the stalk I like to tie down the stalk because it stops the hackle pulling out when I start to wind it. Not everyone does it, but I I do. I nip off that stalk and there's a little bit of the body hanging over the eye, which doesn't matter at all. Not really. 
Okay, my silk is up the front by the eye, ready to secure the hackle, which I'm now going to wind. Cock hackle on this fly, because it's a dry fly. Beetle imitations are, are very good. And when a beetle gets blown onto the water or stumbles onto the water, he has no sense of danger. He's, he's, he's never sort of, doesn't know anything about it. So he splashes about and starts to swim and attracts attention. And one thing I can say, if you are fishing it dry, um, when you cast it, let it land with a plop because that does attract the trout. Now, I uh, I wouldn't say that normally. You always want a dry fly to land like, well, they say thistle down. But um, with the cocoa bondi, let it land with a plop. Okay, I'm going to push back these fibers here to expose the head a bit better, like that, so that I can tie it down a bit. I do like this fly. Welsh pattern, well-known Welsh fly, and a, an old fly, I believe. I, I don't know who invented it, but it is a, a very good old fly. And although I've tied a dry version here, very often, if I'm fishing it dry and I see a fish rise down below me, I'll cast it down and across and try to put a bit of a mend to allow it to sink, and I've even with a sink in line and a, a dry fly, I found I can catch uh, the odd fish. So it's, it's a flexible sort of fly. Okay, I've done the whip finish. I'm pulling it up and I'm going to cut the silk. Just a gentle push. And I can see one hackle over the eye here, which won't matter at all, but I'd nip it out. Okay, next thing to do, <coughs> pardon me, is to varnish the eye. Now I'm trying to make things as uncomplicated as I can because my ambition is to help newcomers, especially youngsters, but I would say newcomers of any age. And fly tires should always be looking to make things easy. Uh, easier, not complicate them. I mean, you can do fancy flies and complicated methods when you get more experienced if you want to, but you'll find that I am a bit of a traditionalist and I will try to do things fairly traditional and straightforward with materials that are easy to obtain. Okay, that's the Cochabondi. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you picked up a few tips. I certainly enjoyed that and uh, I, I thank you for watching.